Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 498, a continuation of a discussion about the signs of hypothyroidism. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Last week we talked about the symptoms of hypothyroidism that people can identify or self-identify off of a list without a blood test, Mm -hmm. which mainly says, go get a blood test, Mm -hmm. verify that this is what's going Mm on. We were having that conversation and you started talking about signs, signs that you can see as a physician. And I'm always intrigued by this because I know that the doctors and nurses are taught in school, look at people. Right. You know, and, and one of the biggest concerns about going to a doctor's office now where they're looking at the computer is they're not catching the signs that they would have ordinarily caught right. just from what they've learned. And my son is an emergency room nurse, and we'll go out to lunch or something, and he'll look over and he said, that guy's a walking heart attack, or that guy's got mm-hmm. this problem, or that guy's got that problem. And I'm like, how do you know? And so that he will tell me how he knows. Mm-hmm. So this is part of how you as a physician would suspect that I might have an issue with my thyroid. If I look at you. If you look at me, Mm -hmm. if you attend to the patient. Or if you were on a phone consultation, I have to ask you these things. Do you have this? Do you have that? So can you see the same thing on a a FaceTime? A lot of people currently are using Mm -hmm. uh, the Internet for Mm -hmm. for visits with their Mm -hmm. physician or consults with their Right now because they're at home. Right. Uh, (laughs) So, So... you, you can see those it's things. It's not as good, but it's still right. it's still better than nothing. Well, let's go through and talk about what okay. what do you see? So when I, I look at a, well, we do vital signs on patients. If we're doing a regular medical visit, we do vitals, we do the blood pressure and pulse. I do it sometimes if I suspect hypothyroidism. I'll just do it during our, our uh, consultation. We, we depend on that information from the primary care. So we don't do it ourselves. But low blood pressure, low pulse is usually uh, tied to low thyroid. Not always do you have low blood pressure because you could have had high blood pressure and then we, uh, just for other reasons, your arteries are stiff. And then, but you also have low thyroid, so that would would mean it would lower you down to kind of a normal. But you don't have to have low blood pressure, but that's one of the signs that we find at a physical exam. Basal body temperature is another thing. Mm-hmm. Basal body temperature is the temperature you take before you get out of bed in the morning. That's the one they, t- they have women take to see if they're ovulating. Right, because women are below are usually below 98.6, but they're not above 98, first half of the cycle, and then they go up by 0.6 when they ovulate. So, okay. so usually 98.6 by the time they've ovulated, and then when they get to the time the day before their period, their temperature drops. Because progesterone also helps you make uh, okay. make heat, but basically what happens with thyroid is you never get to ninety eight, and you and usually people who aren't getting to ninety eight don't ovulate, okay. so they don't go up. The women don't go up. Yeah, so they can't get pregnant, and they don't right. know why. Right, and, yeah. and it's one of the the sad things when somebody has not diagnosed that, and they've been trying for years. Yeah. And they went through in vitro, but nobody diagnosed their low thyroid. So I had a lot of patients that got pregnant in my OBGYN practice just because of that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no sweating when you exercise or you're in hot weather? The, the thyroid stimulates your skin to actually get rid of heat because you're making normal heat with exercise. When you exercise your muscles, your muscles are burning calories and making heat. So to cool yourself off, you sweat. If okay. you don't sweat, there's a high chance that you don't, you don't have enough thyroid. You have low thyroid. So that's one of the things you should tell your doctor. I don't sweat when I work out. Right. That's not normal. You should sweat. Yeah. And that's a way of getting toxins out of your body. So without that, you're not getting all the toxins you need to get out of your body while you're, okay. while you're exercising. So uh, this next thing, uh, swelling all over the body. Mm-hmm. I, I know that there are times when my hands swell. Like if I eat too much mm-hmm. salt, right. my hands swell. 
And when I go to my regular physician for my annual checkup, she always wants to check my ankles and my feet to mm -hmm. see if they are swelling. Mm -hmm. But you were talking about puffiness and swelling all over the whole body. Full body. I mean, you can see it in the face, neck, arms. I mean, your whole body gets swollen. Okay. But usually women notice it most when their rings are tight or uh -huh. their shoes are tight. Okay. Or they hurt because their legs are so swollen. But that has to be accompanied by hands being swollen and other right. other areas For of the body. Thyroid. And water retention, basically, is how okay. we describe it. Brittle nails. Most so here's here's who I'm gonna exclude. People who have their hands in water all day, uh -huh. like surgeons, right. nurses, those those folks can get brittle nails because of their lifestyle. However, other people who don't have that kind of um, water submersion of their hands all the time right. will, will get brittle nails because the, their thyroid's low. It's kind of like brittle hair, brittle nails. So, so is that the same thing? Like I know my physician, again, looks at mm -hmm. my fingernails, and she's looking for ridge lines in my fingernails. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that what you Ridge lines are, some, are, are one of the um, ways we look, too. I didn't include it in here because it's hard to describe. And there's... and. You have to have a, you have to have a trained eye to actually see right. the kind of ridges that thyroid, uh, low thyroid causes. But it's it's like you know you keep breaking your nail every time you do something. Yeah. You've got a hang nail, and I mean a piece of your nail hanging off, yeah. and it feel or they peel. Yes. So that's low thyroid. Usually okay. your toenails do it as well, mm -hmm. but more your they're thicker, so it's usually your hands. Okay. Uh, loss of or thinning body hair, not hair on the top of your head. Mm -mm. And that's one of the things, like, like, there are two kinds of hair. There's there's body hair, the hair that's on your arms that, um, and, and legs. And then there's another kind of hair, which is sexual hair, which is stimulated by testosterone. And that is like chest hair for men, sometimes back hair for men. Um, so... That's that's a little different, but pubic hair for both sexes, and testosterone stimulates those. But body hair, like your arms, your legs, uh, that fuzz that kind of protects you from the cold, uh -huh. that's a thyroid a thyroid um, product. So, so I remember when I used to work with girls that were anorexic, one mm. of the things that they would get is a little fuzz, uh, like peach fuzz, almost all over their body, and right. called. Lanugo. 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 Yeah. I haven't said that word in a long time because babies yeah. have it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so that's, that's a different. That's different. But they usually have low thyroid. Because they usually they're not eating. Just they're shut their getting... thyroid down. Yeah. <laughs> and so instead of real hair, they have this this baby like hair. Yeah. And it does. It feels like peach fuzz. Yeah. And that's an ab. I mean, if you see that as a physician, you kind of know that they're anorexic, but they right. look anorexic. Usually as well. well. By the time you get to them. So, because they uh, learn to hide it. I mean, they yeah. all wear sweaters and, and long sleeve shirts and things like that. That's right. So yeah. they don't want to be weighed either. Right. No. So so they want to hide it because they don't want to be changed. Okay. In any case, that that's different than low thyroid, although it can cause low thyroid. Weight gain when you eat normally. When all of a sudden, you know, you become so efficient, every one of your calories goes mm. goes into fat. That can be insulin resistance, which women get about the time of menopause, and they, they become sensitive to glucose, or that can be low thyroid. Okay. And if you're eating the same amount and exercising the same amount, all of a sudden you're, you're gaining weight, gaining so, fat. So again, as a reminder, these are physical symptoms that do doctors learn to notice almost subconsciously. I mean, as you're mm -hmm. talking to me, you're listening to what I'm saying, mm -hmm. you're looking at your blood test results and all that, but you're also checking off mm -hmm. this mental list in your mind. Mm -hmm. and, and if you see something that triggers, yeah. you'll say, well, what about this? What mm -hmm. is that? Or, or can we check that? Mm -hmm. And that, that those are things that I absorb and I kind of, I, I go, oh, it must be thyroid. You know, I'm, I, I can't even... You listen even... to it almost with your inner ear. Yeah. I mean, it's not... A, a, a deliberately conscious checklist, mm -hmm. but you've learned through years of experience mm -hmm. just to assimilate that perception from somebody that has this issue. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. So swelling and puffiness around the eyes, uh, distended and bloated abdomen. Mm hmm. Just kind of that. Usually, that's from the constipation that they have, and they fill with air, yeah. and they can't get the stool out. Are they gassy? 
you don't have to pass gas. You can have gas inside your intestines. It yeah. can be blocked. Okay. But you just feel bloated. All right. Okay. That's what the girls call it. Goiter or swelling in the neck? We talked about we that talked last week. A big, big collar of, uh, looks like fat, but it's your thyroid gland that's big. And an extremely dry skin that looks like cobblestone mm -hmm. or scales, so itchy all the yeah, time. Yeah, itchy all the time. And you can kind of see that on somebody, especially lower arms and hands. So... I, I always like this one because it's the one that you noticed about I, me yeah. the first time that you talked to me. Yeah. The loss of lateral eyebrows, the, the outer third. Yeah, and you're of, growing them now. Yeah. <laughs> now that you're on thyroid. So so from the the center eyebrow continues, but the la the outside eyebrow uh -huh. goes away. And that's low thyroid. I mean, there's nothing else that causes that. Yeah. So well, when you see some, I see somebody on television yeah. and they've got like half an eyebrow. I'm like, eh, you know, and I look for the other ding, signs. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. yeah, that's kind yeah. of the first thing I look at. So that's one of those things that I, my husband won't let me go over to the table next to us to tell somebody about. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> Probably Dying. not a good opener. Probably to, take your wife to the. Yeah. Next, yeah. <laughs> uh, heart arrhythmias and palpitations. You know, we also always associate that with a fast thyroid, but a slow thyroid can also cause those things. The heart just, just doesn't have a good rhythm it can you can go into atrial fib or you can just have um an irregular rhythm it's not good for you you don't get yeah. constant oxygenation by doing that okay. but that can be from low thyroid as well as high thyroid and then the last one cold hands and feet how is that different from Renault's disease Renault's disease is an autoimmune disease and basically it's it's antibodies that affect the nerves that that um, direct blood flow to your hands. I love doing that to you. We didn't discuss that. No. I just it's like but quiz of the day. But Renaud's but Renaud's disease is is what we call patriotic hands. It's you know your hands. Red, white, and blue. Yeah, they so they yeah. get but they it's in a different order. Right. They they are white when they when you start constricting the blood blood vessels down at the hands and uh -huh. feet. So they turn white. Then they turn blue because they have no oxygen. Then all of a sudden they turn red when the oxygen rushes back, and then they hurt. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 every time somebody goes outside, it triggers it. It's one of the things that gets a little better with testosterone, not always completely better. But um, but Renaud's disease is not low thyroid. You can have the two together, but that's that's a whole different presentation. Yeah. Okay. So if you have three or more of these signs, or three or more of the symptoms mm -hmm. that we talked about last week. It's just a warning. It's, it should flash that says, check your thyroid. Right. That's true. So what are the risk factors that should alert you or your doctor that you are at high risk to have thyroid, pro thyroid problems? It's one of the reasons that I think um, doctors aren't all that keen about it, treating thyroid, and that's because it's a women's issue. Okay. Eight times, women get this problem eight times more than men. And part of that is we, we uh, respond or, or we are sensitive to iodine much more than men are. Uh -huh. Women have two, two um, organs that absorb iodine. And when women hit, hit menarche, when they start having periods, the iodine that they have in their system gets pulled away from their thyroid and it, it goes to their breasts. The bigger the breasts... The lower the thyroid, the, yeah. the lower the thyroid, because it's more iodine being taken. And if you live in the Midwest, where there's no iodine, iodine in iodine our water, yeah. no iodine in our ground, in our uh, soil, then and you eat locally, then you're not getting enough iodine. You have to you have to replace it. So so that's one of the reasons that women get it. Genetically, we have we have other reasons, but that that's something I think everybody, every female in the Midwest. Uh, all the way up to Canada should be taking iodine. Well, and that's uh, one of the other points, living in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. uh, and then being over the age of 50 is another right, one. Right, right. Your thyroid tends to not not survive your age. And and when, and when then when you get to 80, it's like they, it's gone. But the doctors have come out with some really unusual guidelines saying, well, if you're 80 and your thyroid's low, it's okay. Because you're going to die anyway. Because we're going to make you die if yeah. you don't have your thyroid. <laughs> Well, you may volunteer. Okay? Yeah. In time of a national crisis. I mean, that's yeah. just, it's, 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 can I say acid? Sure. 
ass backwards. That's not right. You should be replacing thyroid for yeah. every age patient because we are all as important as one another. Right. So family history of hypothyroidism or hypertension, Graves and uh, Hashimoto's. So hyperthyroidism, Graves disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Graves and Hashimoto's are mostly autoimmune where you attack your own thyroid. Okay. But they are, they are family history uh, dependent. Right. And hyperthyroidism is usually what the thyroid does after it's being uh, attacked by your immune system. It goes up. And then it burns out, and then it drops, and then you've got no thyroid. So you get really skinny, feel like you've got all the energy of Superman, and then it's gone. Yeah. And then you, all yeah. of a sudden, you know, you're 50 just pounds overweight. It flushes or surges, and then stops. Yeah, and then just it just burns out. Huh. What about being allergic to iodine? I didn't know that was possible. Yeah, a lot of people are allergic to iodine. Yeah, they can't eat seafood of any kind because there's a lot of iodine in that. Yeah. Uh, basically... If you can't take iodine, it's really hard to feed your thyroid. So I, I have not had this issue with many people because I just give them thyroid. Right. And I have to give them more if they can't take iodine. Okay. Okay. I mean, you also give a lot of people thyroid and iodine, at least in the Midwest. Together, yes, together. because they work together. All right. Um, poor diet, lack of vitamin A, D, iodine, and zinc. Those, those are necessary for normal thyroid function. So if you think, eh, maybe I have a few of these, but maybe not enough to take a pill, right. then you need to take enough vitamin A, vitamin D, and you also need to take iodine and zinc. Okay. 15 milligrams of zinc. Iodine's 12.5 of iodorol. Vitamin D, usually I give them 5,000. Yeah. I, I usually give them 5,000 a day. Yeah. And vitamin A, if you're not fertile, so if you're past your fertility, I give 25,000 vitamin A. Wow. So that's that's what's necessary. So when you say 25,000, 25,000 what? Units. I use. Okay. International units. Okay. And that's how those things are measured. It's yes. not a large volume. It's just... Iodine and zinc are milligrams. Uh -huh. They're uh, because uh, they're just, they're different than the vitamins. The vitamins are international units. Okay. All right. Uh, if you're diagnosed with depression, uh, diagnosed with an autoimmune disease already, mm -hmm. And then finally, if you drink fluorinated water. Right. So um, the autoimmune thing, if you have one autoimmune disease, you're more likely to have another. So if you've got rheumatoid arthritis, it's much more likely that, that your symptoms are secondary to um, Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. So those, that's how that works, basically. Yeah. If, if your body can't recognize its own tissue, then it often attacks the thyroid. So it attacks your joints. For rheumatoid arthritis, it attacks your thyroid for one of those, the two thyroid diseases that kills your thyroid. So that's, that's one of the risk factors. Um, depression, we used to check the thyroid before somebody was deemed de to have depression. Right. And that, I think, should still be done because if your thyroid's off, you're depressed. Mm -hmm. It just affects all your neurotransmitters. Your serotonin doesn't get made. You, are, you, you can snap out of it in many cases, by taking the thyroid that you need. Right. And last but not least, fluorinated water. My big, my big complaint about the government is this has made us have too much uh, hypothyroidism. It has killed off so many thyroids by putting fluorine, fluorine, fluoride into the water. We can have it in our toothpaste. That's what we need it for is for our teeth. Right. So brush your teeth with fluor, fluor, put it in city water fluoride. Systems. But why it's in your city water, what happens is it got, it's in your water, so it kicks off the iodine. There's, if there was iodine in there, it's gone. Yeah. So if you live on the coast and there's iodine in your, in your water, great. But you can't, you can't have it because it's fluoride. The fluoride right. is more sticky to the water, so the, fluor, the iodine goes away. Okay. So that's, I mean, those are... All of these things are, are, are causes mm -hmm. of um, low thyroid, or, the, or they make you more likely to have low thyroid, but then you have to figure out how to fix it. And here's where we run into problems. The level of thyroid that's on the lab sheets mm -hmm. has been dropping progressively over the last 10 years. So, so why do they change these numbers? Well, I asked Quest and I've asked LabCorp, and they both said, because our experts said so. 
Yeah. But I read what the experts read in endocrinology, and there's nothing to support making a low thyroid level normal. It's not healthy to have a level of free T3 below 3. It, sh it used to be 3, 3 to 4.5. Now, now it goes down to 2. I mean, nobody's healthy when their, thi when their T3 is at 2, 2.0. So why they're doing this, I don't know. It's another women's disease where we say, treat it with as little as possible, which I think is baloney. I think that just makes the doctor's life easier so people don't call up and go, oh, my heart's racing. Well, they could have given the magnesium in the beginning, and that would make it easier because right. they won't get those calls. But they but, have to learn that. So I have to teach them. Yeah, somebody has to has to. Yes, I, but I, you know, I kind of always did thyroid because I had it. So even right. in my GYN practice, uh, starting in 1985, I was giving people thyroid and iodine, and and because I understood it, and because right. I had the disease myself. Right. So. And I've been watching these numbers, which most doctors wouldn't watch. They just go, eh, well, it's not normal, or it is normal. Well, You're it, okay. It plays in tandem with your focus on hormone replacement, right. hormone therapy. You have to know about all of the hormones and how they work. And if, you, if I treat somebody with testosterone and estrogen, and they still feel terrible, not terrible in the ways that those two hormones right. help them, but in other ways, and they're still unhealthy, then I haven't really done my job. Right. you got so to find the solution. I have to find the solution, right. and I have to make them better. They all work together. Every hormone has to be within the range that is right for you, and they all work together. So this is a very important topic. We've done a couple of recent podcasts on it. We've done others in our history. They're, they're all searchable on the website. You can find them. It is important. It's important for you to know about it be aware of it. It's important for you to talk to your physician about it and to have a strategy for treatment. Be an informed consumer of your own health care. Talk to your doctor. Don't settle for having hypothyroidism. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.